Welcome to the Magnify Your Miracles podcast. Get ready to be inspired, uplifted, and connected to the miraculous energy of unconditional love that I call Mother Mary. If you're a highly sensitive, highly creative entrepreneur or light worker, and you want to magnify your impact and your intuition, you are in the right place. I'm your host, Reverend Francis Faden, interfaith minister, intuitive coach, and author of Meditation is Friendship with God. I can't wait to share miraculous stories, books, meditations, messages, and interviews with other miraculous light workers just like you. Are you ready to magnify your miracles? What are we waiting for? Let's get started. Hello, my miraculous friend, and welcome to another episode of the Magnify Your Miracles podcast. I'm Reverend Francis Faden, and I'm so grateful that we get to spend this time together helping you to magnify your miracles. Today, I'm excited to share with you, uh, this is the third episode in a four-part series on self-healing and self-love for highly sensitive souls like you and me. And today, I'm sharing a wonderful book with you. I want to remind you that in our fourth and final episode, I'm going to be introducing you to an amazing guest who is going to be sharing all about gut healing for highly sensitive souls. So make sure that you come back next week for that episode. But before we get into today's book review, let's take a few deep breaths together. Breathing in the energy of expansion, breathing out anything you no longer need. If you're driving, please keep your eyes on the road, but you can still bring your awareness to your breath. And just allowing yourself to be as present as you can be for this moment, knowing that the universe and your own deepest, highest self is just waiting to guide you today and to inspire you and connect with you through the information that you're going to be receiving. So knowing that you're going to be hearing exactly what you need to hear to help you magnify your miracles today, let's take one more deep breath together in gratitude. and We can begin. All right, my friend. Well, today we're talking about a really helpful, wonderful book called Loving Yourself to Great Health, Thoughts and Food, The Ultimate Diet. And it is co-authored by Louise Hay, Alia Cadro, and Heather Dane. And for those of you who know me, you know that Louise Hay, who is the author of the amazing book, You Can Heal Your Life, is one of my heroes and one of my mentors. And I've been following her work since I was I don't know, 19 or 20 years old um, when I was having my own health crisis back back when I was in college. And what I love about Louise is that she had a diagnosis that she didn't have very long to live when she was 40 or 45, and she lived to be 90 years old. And I got the chance to meet her, I think, when she was 87, 88, somewhere around this. And this book came out, she was writing this book with these other two authors around that same time, around 88 years old. And so Louise kept going and she is an inspiration for all of us. And so this book combines two things that I think are so important and that are near and dear to my heart, which is your thoughts and how you're talking to yourself and what you're eating and how you're treating yourself through your diet. So I'm going to give you, I'm going to read a few things from this. And I want to share with you that this book is a resource It's something that I hope that you get for yourself and you can come back to it over and over again, but it does not replace talking to somebody individually. Next week, I'm going to introduce you to to the person I'm actually working with that's helping me. I highly encourage you to have somebody who can give you really specific feedback just for you, but this book will kind of lay the framework of how do you bring these two things together of what you're eating, how you're living what you're thinking and feeling so that you can start to heal on a really deep level. So let me open up this beautiful book. And 
on the very beginning of this book. I want to let you know that here are the chapters. You know, the, the part one is seven steps to eat, think, and love your way to great health. And so step one is creating a new perspective on health. Step two is to love yourself and your body. Step three is to know how your body really works. Step four is to listen to your body. Step five is to emphasize food and thoughts that heal your body and your mind. And step six is to empower your health with home remedies. Step seven is a roadmap for your best health, which is um, giving you an action plan. And then part two, which is so great that both of these things are in this book, is recipes and how to set up your kitchen and getting started, including tools and equipment that you need. Because one of the things I find is when you're highly sensitive, you want to make sure that you're not cooking with Teflon or other things that your body might be reacting to because you're highly sensitive. You want to respect that. So I would really recommend that you take a look at this part two and look to see, is my kitchen really set up for my own optimal health? Do I have um, products or chemicals or things that might be affecting me? And then they also have in chapter nine, sample menus and meal options to get you started. And so, you know, again, this is not a book that you're just going to sit down and read at one time. This is something that you can come back to over and over again. So here we go in the preface. This is from Louise Hay. At 88 years of age, I can say that health and happiness are the most important tenets of my life. Many of you who have read my books know that I did not have an easy childhood nor any of the advantages of money or education for much of my life. Then I discovered the one thing that changed the course of my health and my life, the belief that every thought we think is creating our future. This one little idea shifted the direction of my life. I found that if I could create peace, health, and harmony in my mind, I could create the same in my body and in my world. This book is not about the latest trend or fad. It's about how to craft a life that will nourish and support you. It's about all the ways you can love yourself more. It's about ancient healing wisdom that will work with your busy schedule. And it's about learning that you matter. Somewhere in all this stress, noise, and to-do list, there is still a space for you. My fellow authors and I are going to show you how to find that space so you can feel good now and long into your future. Over the years, there have been some key points to my philosophy on life, happiness, and health that have remained timeless. I'm going to share them with you right now because they will help set the stage for this book that you're about to read. And this is what Louise calls what I believe. It's in the preface of this book. One, life is really very simple. What we give out, we get back. Every thought we think is creating our future. Two, it's only a thought and a thought can be changed. I believe this is true for your health too. Three, we create every so-called illness in our body, and we have the power to change our thoughts and begin to dissolve it. Four, releasing resentment and negative thoughts will help dissolve even the most incurable health conditions. Five, when you don't know what else to do, focus on love. Loving yourself makes you feel good, and good health is really about feeling good. And six, when we really love ourselves, everything in our life works, including our health. And then she goes on to say, this book is a love story. It's about loving yourself as a way to create health, happiness, and longevity. Yes, you will learn tips, menus, recipes, affirmations, and exercises that have worked to keep me healthy, vibrant, and strong throughout my life. But more than that, your heart will be open to new ways to love and support yourself on this incredible journey. Over the years, I have taught ways to eliminate the negative thoughts in your mind and replace them with positive affirmations, to practice forgiveness and to dissolve resentment, to learn to really love who you are, to do mirror work. Those of you who have followed these lessons have seen your lives turn around for the better, and now it is time to take the next step. I've had so many of you say to me, you look so young and vibrant, or I want to be healthy like you when I get older. 
In this book, I will be sharing exactly what I do. For me, this is the next step in changing your thoughts. It's changing your way of life to one that focuses on nourishing and treating your body with love. I have always loved learning new things, and I believe that every hand that touches me is a healing hand. In this way, I have found many wonderful people doing extremely good work, and I often like to share what I've learned from them with the rest of the world. In this book, I'm introducing two people who have transformed my life, Aliyah Kedro and Heather Dane. I would like them to transform yours as well, if you're willing. In this book, the three of us will share the things that I do to feel my best while working, traveling, writing, and having an active social life. Some of the secrets we share will be new to you, while others may remind you of what you would like to reaffirm. As I look back and think about why I feel so good at age 88, I truly believe it's because of the way I live. My thoughts from morning until I go to sleep at night are mostly a stream of positive affirmations. I firmly believe that life loves me and everything I need comes to me at the right time. I also believe that I am a big, strong, healthy girl. Then I leave it to life to bring my thoughts into manifestation so that this comes true for me. When you expand your thinking and belief, your love flows freely. When you contract, you shut yourself off. Can you remember the last time when you were in love, your heart went, ah, it was such a wonderful feeling. It's the same with loving yourself, except that you will never leave once you have that love. It's with you for the rest of your life, so you want to make it the best relationship that you can have. I know that you will enjoy this book as much as I have enjoyed writing it. And then in the introduction, this is by, and I'm hoping I'm pronouncing this correctly, Aliyah, Aliyah Kedro or Kadro, and Heather Dane. And they go on to say here, is one of the most significant secrets to Louise's personal success is how she eats and cares for herself every day in the small moments. When people say that affirmations don't work for them, Louise always asks them, what did you have for breakfast? In this book, we're going to share many reasons why this simple question reveals a great wisdom about how you think and how you feel so that you can be your best every day. And I'm not going to read their stories, but I highly recommend that you do. They're both amazing healers in their own right. And in the introduction as well on page 14, It says, what makes our book different is it's a health book that addresses how to heal the body and the mind and how both really matter. We gently teach you why making better, loving choices is your greatest tool for health and healing. We focus on ancient yet time-proven health tips that are dogma-free and transcend fads. We teach you that nourishing your body makes affirmations, good moods, willpower, and better decision-making much easier. All right, my friend. And then we get into part one, step one. Create a new perspective on health. And this is on the bottom of page three. You've probably been taught that you have to go outside yourself to doctors and experts to be fixed. But what if instead you knew that while doctors and experts can provide insightful guidance, you have a great power inside of you? Well, it's true. You do. You have the power to start listening to your body. Your body, like everything else in life, is a mirror of your inner thoughts and beliefs. Every cell responds to every thought you think and every word you speak. So continuous patterns of thoughts and beliefs can produce body behaviors and patterns of ease and dis-ease. The more you get to know your body and the better you listen to it, the more it will guide you to good health. We will talk more specifically about this throughout this book, but right now, just know this. If you experience a health challenge, life is inviting you to love yourself. I'm going to say that again, my friend. If you experience a health challenge, life is inviting you to love yourself. In other words, no matter what your problem is, there is only one answer, loving yourself. And then on page four, whenever you deal with a health issue, your body is asking you to be kinder to yourself. And that starts with loving yourself a little more each day. 
As you start loving yourself more, you'll easily give yourself what you need without waiting until you've done everything else on your to-do list. Sometimes, though, you may not even know what you need. And as you read this book, you will learn the tools to help you recognize what your body needs most from you to feel happy, healthy, energized, and strong. All right, so I'm not going to read this whole book to you. (laughs) I want to read this whole book to you because it's like, oh, it's so important. And the reason that I'm, I'm sharing this with you is because I think all of us as highly sensitive people Oh, we don't know that we're highly sensitive for most of our lives. We don't know that we're being impacted not only by the foods that we're eating, but by the people that are around us and by our environment and the media and all of that. And I'm not saying that to blame anybody. I'm saying that to empower you and to say, wait a minute, if I'm highly sensitive, that means I have this incredible gift and I need to be the steward of my gift. So a lot of people, when they find out they're highly sensitive, they think it's a bad thing. It's a gift. I know for me, it's like, you know, I can get my feelings hurt so easily if I don't take care of myself. You know, if I let myself be in environments that aren't good for me. But that same gift that I have is what helps me have clients in Australia when I live on the East Coast of the United States. I can feel their energy around the world. That's the gift of being a highly sensitive person. But it also means that You know, I had to go through my kitchen and make sure that I didn't have cookware that was, you know, I was unknowingly ingesting toxic chemicals through through my food and that was affecting me. A lot of highly sensitive people have digestion issues and gut issues. Why? Because our sensitivity is so connected to that second chakra in the lower abdominal area. We'll talk about this more next week when I bring on my very special guest. We talk about gut healing specifically. But this book is going to give you the ability and at least a jumping off point where you can start saying, wait a minute, how can I really honor myself? Now, they don't go in here and say, this book is for highly sensitive souls, but I'm telling you. (laughs) And not that you only have to be highly sensitive to get the example of it, but they talk a lot about autoimmune issues. And, you know, autoimmunity is when the body attacks itself. And that is a manifestation. I've not met one person, myself included, who has an autoimmune issue, who is not highly critical of themselves and, you know, energetically attacking themselves. And as you can change your thoughts and you can start being kinder to yourself, that autoimmunity can start to get so much better, so much better. I know people that have completely changed their autoimmune conditions. So I'm going to read this last part to you and then we'll wrap up our review today. It's at the bottom of page 10. And it says here, loving yourself is about taking care of yourself. When you love yourself, you take care of your own needs. Yet too often today, people, especially women, believe that they must take care of other people or other responsibilities before themselves. For example, Now, I want you to listen and see if you relate to any of these things. Do you find yourself saying yes when you really want to say no? Are you helping others so often that you have little time to rest and relax? Do you feel like you'll rest once you retire or once your kids are grown up? Do you find yourself saying, I just need to get through this and then I'll rest and take a break? Do you feel like a people pleaser or do you fear others' disapproval of you? Are you constantly feeling like you give and give while not getting much back from others or possibly not being able to receive support, gifts, or compliments from others? And are you often trying to set boundaries and failing? Oh my goodness. That's everything that I've gone through and everything that I help my clients with as well. Because as highly sensitive people, those are really big issues for us. And it's really important to see, again, not from a place of blame or criticizing ourselves, but from a place of empowering ourselves to go, oh, now I get why I'm struggling so much with this. So my friends, I highly recommend that you check out this book, Loving Yourself to Great Health, Thoughts and Food, The Ultimate Diet. You could probably find it at your library. You can definitely get it on Amazon. I'll put it in the the link. You could buy it directly from Hay House, who is the publisher of the book. 
You can get it on Kindle. You can probably even get it on an audiobook if you wanted to. Um, this book does come with, I don't know if it comes with it, but there, there are some guided meditations that go along with it. And I know I have that on my phone and on my iPod. So it's a really rich resource. And as I said, there's the inner work and then there's getting your kitchen set up and then there's even recipes. So it's something that you'll come back to again and again. And I really wanted to include it in our series on self-love for highly sensitive souls like you and you and I, because this is really a great resource for you that I believe will help you over and over again as you deepen your ability to love yourself exactly as you are. All right, my friend. Well, thank you so much for listening today. I really appreciate it. I would love to hear if this book and these thoughts resonated with you. Are you already doing something like this? Or maybe you have another resource and I'd love to know what your resource is as well. I'm a a resource junkie. I love knowing what's out there because I'm always passing this information on to my clients and to people in the membership and even here on the podcast as well. If you did get something out of this episode, I'd love for you to share it, share it with your friends, share it with your family, anybody that you know who might be inspired by it. You can share it on social media as well. That would really help me out. And of course, the most important thing is if you can leave me a review on Apple Podcasts, that helps me out so, so much. So thank you so much, my friend. I look forward to hearing from you. If you leave a comment, know that I answer each and every comment and I love hearing from you. And we always want to remember that the key to magnifying your miracles is to know that your miracle is already here. God bless you, my friend. Bye-bye. Thank you for listening to the Magnify Your Miracles podcast. I'm so grateful to be able to spend this time with you. If you want even more inspiration, feel free to visit my website, francisfaden.com or magnifyyourmiracles.com. And if you did enjoy this episode, I would really appreciate it if you left a review on iTunes, Stitcher, or wherever it is that you connect with awesome podcasts. Remember, the key to magnifying your miracles is remembering that your miracle is already here.